This tutorial will show you how to get started with translating projects with Catalyst Translator Lite. Catalyst's interface is divided into windows. The Navigator window contains all the files and folders included in the translation project. The Workspace window displays all the strings for translation. The Result window gives you feedback on the various tasks performed. And the Translator toolbar is where you edit the translations. If you have existing translation memories and glossaries available, you can add them to your project environment. Go to the Active TM and MT tab and click the Add button. In the Active TM window, click the Add button again and navigate to the translation memory file. In Translator Lite, the following file formats are supported as translation memories. Let's select TTK file format and click OK to attach that translation memory. Now to attach a glossary, go to the Term Sources tab, click the Add button. In the Glossary window, click the Add Glossary button and navigate to the file. In Catalyst Translator Lite, the following file formats are supported as glossaries. Click on the file and open and click OK to attach the glossary file. My translation memory and glossary are now attached. Any translation match from the translation memory will appear in the reference tab. The percentage of a match is displayed on the right hand side with the name of the TTK it originates from and the status of the string in the translation memory. All this invaluable information is helpful in determining if the translation match is a good fit for a project. Glossary matches will be identified as a red overline in a source field in the translator toolbar and associated translations will be displayed in the terms tab. The navigator pane contains all files and resources included in your translation project. It behaves just like your Windows File Explorer in that you can expand and collapse the contents to see the resources within each folder and files. There are two buttons of interest in the navigator window. The first one is to show and hide status columns. This button is by default enabled the first time you open Catalyst. The columns display one of five statuses which can be applied to folders and files. For instance, in this project, the bitmap resources have been marked as frozen, which means they cannot be translated. The dialogues have been marked as priority, meaning they should be translated first. The version blocked has a memo attached to it. Hovering over the icon displays the contents of the memo. There are two more statuses available. One is to show that resources have been exported, which would be the result of dividing a TTK. The other is to show that resources are to be extracted as original. The Show and Hide Columns button works like a toggle. It can be turned on and off as desired. You can also resize the window at will. The next button in the Navigator window is the Show All Strings button. When expanding or collapsing resources in your Catalyst project, Clicking on an end resource or file will automatically display the string list in the working area. However, when clicking on a folder, no strings are displayed in the working area. You need to click the show all strings to indicate to Catalyst you wish to see all the strings contained within that folder, and this is recursively. This means if I click on the folder title, I click on Show All Strings to display all strings contained in this project. Thus, clicking on the Online Help folder and clicking on Show All Strings will display all the strings contained within that folder in the working area, and this is recursive, meaning it will contain all resources found within files and folders recursively. The workspace area offers four different modes to display the translatable contents. Go to the View ribbon and select String Mode, Visual Mode, 
split horizontally or split vertically. A shortcut for those four views is also accessible at the bottom right corner. To translate your project, select a string in the workspace window and enter the relevant text in the translation field. Any translation match from the translation memory will be displayed in the reference tab with the percentage match, the origin of the translation and the status of the translation in the translation memory. To reuse this translation, click the Get Translation button in the Power Translate ribbon. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut Alt Home. Clicking on another file in the project will redraw the string list in the working area. I select the first string for translation. You can see there is a 100% match in the reference tab and will reuse that translation. Click on Get Translation. From here, I can click Enter to move to the next string. Again, there is a 100% match and I can either click on Get Translation or use the shortcut Alt Home to automatically apply the translation. Click Enter to move to the next string. We still have 100% match available from the translation memory. Again, I use Alt Home to automatically leverage the translation from the translation memory. If necessary, I could always modify the string. I can click Enter when happy to move on to the next string. Again, I have a 100% match available here. I can click Alt Home to apply the translation. Click Enter. And now we have no translation available from the translation memory. We will need to enter the translation manually. Strings in your translation project may have different statuses, which will appear in the translated status column in a workspace window. When a string is translated, the for review icon status will appear. If you leverage a translation from the translation memory, a for review leveraged icon will appear with a green arrow. This is for a 100% match. If a translation with less than a 100% match is applied, this is also known as fuzzy match and will appear with a fuzzy match icon showing a red question mark. Hovering over it shows the percentage match. The last status available to a string is signed off and this means a string has been translated and a reviewer has reviewed and signed off the string, clicking on the sign off button. The blue tick shows that the string is now signed off. Individual string can also have additional information attached to them. For example, this string contains a memo. You can review the contents of the memo by hovering over the icon in a workspace window or look into the Properties tab with all the properties associated to the string. This next string here is locked, meaning this string does not require translation. The next string contains what is known as a keyword. Words or groups of words which are underlined in blue do not require translation. Clicking on them will result in selecting the entire keyword, which can only be deleted or left alone. Generally, they should be left alone. And finally, there are strings which contain context information, which can be reviewed in the Reference Browser tab. It displays a URL to any hosted information such as a website or an image in this case. Click the Automate Contact Links in Reference Browser button in the Translate to Toolbar to ensure that the Reference Browser will pop up anytime you come across a string which contains context information. Similar to keywords, glossary term matches can be identified in the source field of the Translate to Toolbar with a red overline. Associated translations are listed in the Terms tab on the Translate to Toolbar with a number in square brackets identifying how many matches are available. To apply a translated term, select the desired text in the translation field and click the Get Current Term button 
in the Paratranslate ribbon. Then complete your translation. The Quick Find toolbar can help you organize your workspace. In the Look In dropdown, you can select a filter to group and display strings based on their status. For example, untranslated. All the untranslated strings are grouped and displayed together. Or you may find signed off strings. Or leverage strings. They are all grouped and based on their status. The filters allow you to concentrate on the tasks at hand. It is a good idea at the start of your project to work on the duplicates first. Select the duplicates filter to group all duplicates together. There you can select the first string, this one is already translated, and automatically translate all duplicates with the same translation. To do so, click translate all button located in the power translate ribbon. This automatically translates all duplicates. This moves to the next duplicated group. You can translate the first string. Not forgetting to use your term match. And then click on translate all to automatically apply the translation to the rest. And we can do so on the last translation. This, if we do not need to change that string, we could just simply mark it as for review and then apply translate all. As well as using filters, you may refine the string list by entering text in the look for field. For example, dialog. Click the quick find button. Now the string list only displays the strings which include the word dialog. This search is based on the option selected in the Quick Find options here. In this example, we searched only in the translated strings. Looked for strings are highlighted in green in the string list. It is possible to refine the string list further by typing more text in a look for field, for example, bar, and click the Refine button. The string list is narrowed down to three strings. To clear the refined list, click on the Clear Quick Find button. You can search for text in your project, going to the Home ribbon and click Find and Replace. The search will be carried recursively from the position or resource selected in the Navigator window. If you wish to search the entire project, click the Current Project Radio button. Enter the text you are looking for and select the options necessary. For example, if I tick this option, only the translated strings will be searched. I can also search into the original strings. I can search into memos or IDs. There are further options available, such as using regular expressions or using match case. With the search complete, the results are posted in the Find and Replace window. There you can click on each individual result to jump directly to that string in the project. At any time during the project, you may review the statistics, in other words the word count. Go to the Statistics tab and click on the Refresh button to recalculate the current word count. It is important to click on this button any time you do some work, so that Catalyst takes the time to recalculate the current word count. This pane operates just like your navigator window, in that you can extract and collapse the content to see individual word count down to the resource. The top line, the project title, is a summary of the overall word counts. Click anywhere outside the pane to fold it automatically. If you wish to keep it in view at all times, just pin it using the pin button.